Um, I know Intel's obviously doing a neuromorphic chip where they're trying to actually like mimic that brain, right. the actual design of a brain. Is that something that you'd kind of think might be a way forward? Is like actually a complete redesign of, yeah. of the silicon well, in that way? The last seven years of when I was at the University of Tennessee, that's what our research we worked on is neuromorphic computing. So we actually built some machines. Uh, we actually built a robot that was trained to avoid obstacles, roam around and avoid obstacles. And it's possible. I mean, you, yeah, you can build systems. We built what I would call virtual neurons and synapses. So we didn't use traditional computing. You know, Intel's uh, neuromorphic, they still have traditional processors in their neuromorphic system. I think they have three um, Intel cores or something in, in their systems, which is fine. I mean, a blend of technology is not so bad, but we wanted to build more pure neurons and synapses, and that's how our imp implementations went. Now, in relative to gaming, it'd be interesting to see, I always thought it'd be neat if you could design a character that would uh, essentially learn from its experience, and thus it had a more free mind. You know, you know characters, gaming characters, they tend to, if you operate in the same method, they'll always respond the same way. It'd be neat if it was you can make it a little bit more variable, where they would alter their response based on what they've experienced in past parts of the game, um, and thus the game would be infinitely variable. Um, and the outcomes, I guess that might be a problem because then you would never know what the outcome would be. I don't know if you could sell it if you wouldn't ever know the true outcome. But you could imagine that the landscapes and the rest of the machine would always be variable. And who knows what you would end up coming up with. I, I, I think that's where we're going to get to in, in gaming. Uh, and that, I don't know if that's going to make it more fun or not. Is that, I, I'm, yeah. curious what, I'm curious what you think, because sometimes people want, have, want a goal. You know, I, I want to get to X. Yeah, I 100% know what you mean. I think because the, the dream is always like an AI. We call them AI, obviously, now, like mm -hmm. in games. But it's kind of just a name just to for a shell that's a shell of rules that right. exists in a certain way right a, a if you actually had that rules. yeah if you had that so that they actually meant you know ai they're a bit more true to their name and were a bit more reactive and kind of existed and did their own thing and learned from it i mean it sounds like the dream but like you say i i hadn't really thought of it in a sense of what would you just what would you have yeah would you lose that goal would you lose that kind of drive to do yeah. something because there'd be maybe no end to a game but maybe or... no end i mean the, the character would still have purpose you would program purpose and that's fine um and so you might put that in place but you would still they'd still be free to alter their approaches um and learn what you know so they as you got smarter they would get smarter it would it'd be an interesting contest uh, to see what would happen I would definitely not want to be a bug tester uh, to test that right. game. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you'd have to you'd have to put some governors on them to kind of control how far they would go as you're trying to do the test. Um, but I always wondered. The other thing I wondered is once the character morphed, then what does it become? Does the person that programmed the initial character still own the character? Or now is that mm. character independent of the people that created it? I don't, you know, these are all these interesting.